What is good, everybody? Welcome back into another episode here. ATM's Money Moves. We're talking about Dynasty Fantasy Football, some of your Dynasty rosters, and things that I think are imperative we have got to have discussions on. We have three weeks and one game of week four under our belts, and oh, it is back. We are so back. You can feel that? The tension in the air. I can feel it all the way down in my plums. The thing is, right now, just by the simple laws of mathematics, week three, every single year, there are teams convinced, absolutely contending, some of the greatest teams that you've ever seen assembled in fantasy football, and all of a sudden, it hits them like a ton of bricks. I fucked up. And slowly over time and naturally, that panic starts to set in greater and greater, by the hour, by the minute, and eventually, when that panic really starts to hit them, we get to what I call bad haircut day. Three weeks into the season, this early on, the plan is to bring you along slowly. Just give you some players that could be over or undervalued, let you go out there, mix it up with your league mates, grow up a little bit, and slowly we'll get you ready to run with the Bulls. The training wheels haven't helped a damn bit. Your team is sorry as hell in your own three, and you want me to fix it. And I'm sick of you playing the victim. You gotta take control of your damn life. Work out life will change your life. Now, as you're taking a real good look at this, I honestly have no idea where the hell you're looking, but I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you where you should be looking. Two lines which stick out like a sore thumb off the rip are the yellow and the red line now quick and dirty here's the skinny the quarterback position is off to the worst start that we have seen and it's not even that close three weeks into the season glad we got that out of the way i had to body bag the whole damn position that's right i'm certifiable i'm going right back in to the wasteland that currently is the quarterback position but here's the thing if you've been paying any attention to me at all you're not just coming to see me today for a bad haircut then you already know that I've been preaching and talking all summer about the Konami code. Now, when I'm talking Konami code quarterbacks, I'm not talking about some guys that can just take off and run a little bit here and there. I'm not talking about a guy like Deshaun Watson who doesn't even fancy himself as a running back. No shit, you're not a running back, Deshaun. I'm not sure you're a quarterback either, but somehow you're still getting paid. So no, when it comes to Konami code, I'm not talking about just having a nice rushing floor. I'm talking about the quarterbacks that because of their legs have upside that basically no one else at the quarterback position possesses, the elite ceiling. And if you're with me on this so far, that probably sounds pretty good in theory, but here's the thing. This is a very short list of people that really meet this criteria, right? You want to know how short the list is? Think about it. Going back into the offseason, before the NFL draft, we had five people that really met this criteria. Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Jalen Hurts, Kyler Murray, and Anthony Richardson. Obviously, after the NFL draft, and like we've been preaching all offseason, Jaden Daniels is another person in that list. So for those of you out there tallying, that's a total of six quarterbacks. And with those six in particular, that's not just a short list of QB. That's an expensive asset. Of those six quarterbacks, over at Keep Trade Cut, only one of them is down of consequence and that's Anthony Richardson. And once you get outside of those six Konami quarterbacks, we're talking about a totally different range and situation. You don't even necessarily know if we're getting a starter for the full season. And the reason my first dynasty buy is Justin Fields is because I'm calling him bullshit. I'm calling bullshit in Pittsburgh and this whole story that Mike Tomlin is trying to sell you. After today, Justin Fields will have started the first four games for the Pittsburgh Steelers. After all, we knew all offseason that the undisputed starter was going to be Russell Wilson. Leading up to week one, we found out that Russell Wilson was dealing with this calf injury, which opened the door to Justin Fields being the starter. And there's a very strong chance that after today, Mike Tomlin, unfortunately, is going to have to report the exact same thing. Unfortunately for Russ, this is going to be the fourth straight game that he's missed this season. And that number is the same number as all the other games that he's missed in his entire career. Obviously, I don't have all the behind the scenes information about the situation. But as a Browns fan, as much as it pains me to say this, one thing I can tell you about the Steelers organization is that they're run very well and they're also run very differently than the large majority of the NFL. One of the main things that makes the Steelers so different than the large majority of the NFL would be the word continuity. When it comes to continuity, that is at a premium for the Steelers. The NFL is extremely cutthroat and it's all about what have you done for me lately. And if you're not performing lately in the NFL in general, you could literally be gone tomorrow. So many different NFL teams have a ton of turnover year in and year out. And even if a team has a brand new head coach and they're not performing, they may not even make it through their first season. Mike Tomlin's been the head coach for the Steelers since 2007. That's 18 years in a row. Mike Tomlin's tenure is now eligible to vote this election. I know, I know. Mike Tomlin has not had a losing season since he's been the head coach for the Steelers. So maybe that's the reason they've kept him so long. Well, when you go back and take a look, Bill Cowher, the coach prior to that, he had been there for 15 full seasons. Bill Cowher took over for the team in 1992, and their head coach prior to that was the legendary Chuck Knoll. Since 1969, the Steelers have had three different head coaches. Super Bowl I was in 1967. Literally almost since the inception of the Super Bowl, the Steelers have had three different head coaches. Now to give you some comparative context, the Jaguars and Panthers, they were both expansion teams in 1995. Since then, each one of those teams has had eight different head coaches. The Houston Texans, who weren't even a team till 2002, have had four head coaches. The Cleveland Browns have had 17 different head coaches over that time. Hell, I mean, even the old Browns, which a lot of people call the Ravens now, they've had four head coaches since 1996. Justin Fields plays quarterback. He's not a head coach. I know, I know thing is Justin Fields as a starter has this Pittsburgh Steelers team at 3-0 and 
And while Mike Tomlin, no matter who's under center, is going to prove to have a winning record, one thing that they have not had at all since Big Ben has been there is any type of a chance to go anywhere in the playoffs, even if they sneak in. Justin Fields has this team winning the division, and right now the way he's playing, whether you like it or not, this is a recipe for winning football, and, and Fields very easily could be the best quarterback that the Steelers have had since Big Ben. No matter what you think about Justin Fields as a quarterback or as a dynasty asset, one thing we definitely know about Justin Fields is he fits the Konami Code category and may be the highest upside of all the Konami Code quarterbacks. While two years ago probably feels like an eternity to you now, it was only two years ago that Justin Fields broke the NFL record as a quarterback with 178 rushing yards on the ground. Now, if you haven't watched Fields play it all this year and you're just looking at box scores, you're obviously thinking this is the same Justin Fields, though, that while he did have all that rushing upside, lost his job because he can't throw the football. And while technically, yes, this is the same Justin Fields. Over the last two weeks, though, in particular for Justin Fields, I've noticed a guy that's extremely confident and actually throwing the ball a lot with poise. One thing I can tell you for sure in week one is he did not have anywhere near that same level of comfort. And when I think about that, going into week one, the Steelers were game planning for Russell Wilson to be the quarterback. And obviously moving into week two, the circumstances were different. And it looks very much like the Steelers were game planning for Justin Fields to be the starter in week two, in week three, and obviously now in week four. And moving forward, thinking about all that continuity, regardless of if the Steelers win the game today or not, I don't think there's any reason they're going to be looking to change the situation at quarterback unless Justin Fields all of a sudden starts turning the ball over at an extremely high rate. Right now, Fields has only thrown one pick, and if Justin Fields can keep this up, he not only could be the team's starting quarterback for the rest of the season, he very well may be their starting quarterback moving forward. Oh, and speaking of that whole Konami Code thing, we haven't seen him have a massive game as far as the rushing department goes. He did run one in last week. Now, while Fields hasn't given us one of these wild rushing performances through the first three weeks, Fields didn't just suddenly lose the ability to run the football. And because he hasn't had one of these crazy rushing games, his prices are depressed, which is why you're able to buy him for this. Even the most recent trades for Justin Fields that have gone down. Right now, you can get Justin Fields for Aaron Jones straight up. You can get Justin Fields for Adonai Mitchell in a second. You can get Justin Fields for Zach Moss in a fourth. Whether you like the tight end position or not, you can have him for Jake Ferguson. And while somebody traded Fields away for a single second, I can't imagine that's happening in many leagues. But he has also been traded multiple times for two seconds. In a 12-team Superflex League, the truth is I love every single one of those trades. But right now, Keep Trade Cut could not have thrown me any better of a lob because if Justin Fields can be had for Braylon Allen, now that's a money move. And you know what? What a perfect segue. Let's talk about some of the young guns in this running back class right now. All these running backs you really liked in this class? For what? We knew the class wasn't that great at the running back position. You're just, you're just like Brick, ain't you? I love desk. Brick, are you just looking at things in the office and saying that you love them? I love lamp. Do you really love the lamp, or are you just saying it because you saw it? I love lamp. Blake Warren. Oh, Trey Benson. Oh, and then uh, Marshawn Lloyd, for sure. Now hold the phones. We have an emergence. We have a breakout. Braylon Allen now has showed out for two games in a row. You're starting to see this guy is a freak of nature. Now, now hold on. Have you seen this kid play? 235 pounds running away from defenders. Braylon Allen's still not old enough to get a beer. Braylon Allen doesn't need a beer. All we need to do is pour one out for that dead body he left in the backfield. I just wish one day one person would look at me sometime, some way, at some point in my life, even a fraction in which they are looking at Braylon Allen right now. It, it's only natural. I get it. You're not going to pick me over Braylon Allen. Never in a million years. I get your love. But what? what's the plan? Listen, the, the truth is, Braylon Allen has you hypnotized. You got me so hypnotized. The way your body rolling round and round. We've got to break this trance and start getting you to look at things objectively. Not this glorified sex symbol. The running back position in particular, a lot of its downfall has been basically this play in lineup leagues, especially of any running back on a 53. And this any running back on a 53 really works out well because when you have a running back given all of the opportunity, the large majority of the touches, that player is somebody you should want to start regardless of talent. Take a look at this chart here. It's actually cherry picked for you. I knew you'd have a problem with looking at week one. Zach Charbonnet, the last two weeks, has played for Kenneth Walker. Walker played in week one. However, he did not play in week two and week three. Saquon Barkley's getting 85% of snaps, as well as Kyron Williams. B. John Robinson, 79% of snaps. Zach Moss, believe it or not, 78% of snaps. Kamar now 74%. We have Devin Singletary at 73, Rashad White, a cone at 72. Brees Hall, over these two weeks, is getting 72% of the snaps. Braylon Allen, currently in these last two weeks, that type of snap share is not going to get it done. Herein lies the problem. Braylon Allen, as talented as he may be, is he going to actually start eating into a sizable chunk of Brees Hall's workload? And because of the situation with Brees Hall, this running back 18 ranking is not only irresponsible, it's time you start acting like an adult. You got to start being an adult at some point. It's the first quarter of the big game. You want to toss up a Hail Mary. I'd like to be pimps from Oakland or cowboys from Arizona, but it's not Halloween. 
Grow up, Peter Pan. Don't chocula. Now, if you still don't want to grow up, you want to live in Never Everland, wait till you see what you're missing out here on trades. Over the last five days on Sleeper, Braylon Allen has been traded for a first on three different occasions. Now in your league, if you're not able to get a first, you still want to liquidate. On multiple occasions, he's also been traded for two second round picks. Now if you wanted to pivot your Braylon Allen into another running back, how about either Aaron Jones, James Conner, or Jordan Mason? And if you are one of those people that feels like you got draft picks burning holes in your pocket, how about attaching a second to Braylon Allen to get both Aaron Jones and James Conner? And at this very moment, his value is still going up. He is now past David Montgomery, RB17, to make himself the highest rated second running back on any team on Keep Trade Cut. And quite literally, any of these trades is a money move. And just as he thought he had a perfect segue before, all of a sudden, he heard a knock at the door. Who is it? Kind of in the middle of something here. You've got mail. I gotta open it right now. What do we got here? Sorry I've been MIA. Thanks for waiting on me. Noah. I want you to put the word out there. That we back up. I knew he'd come through. I knew it. I knew you'd come through. I knew it. I only had one call at the tight end position and everyone was telling me you would never come through. I don't know if you remember last week or the week prior or the month prior or this entire calendar year when I've been telling you any of these tight ends that have a lot of dynasty value, you got to try to get off of them and sell now. And it's okay if you don't remember because I do. I remember you laughed at me mocked me ridiculed me this guy this guy wants me to sell sam laporta he wants me to sell the best tight end who was a rookie last year in dynasty <laughs> who is this clown uh, he's a, a noah fant guy what did he say now speaking of comedy if i was funny to you then wait until you see how funny this shit is especially in the extremely heavy tight end premium leagues the reward for having those elite tight ends are going to pay off and this huge payoff through three weeks dalton kincaid tight end 10.152 in warp Followed up by Sam Laporta, who's given you .151 in warp. It is a close race between those two. After a middling week for Noah Fant of six catches for 60 yards at the tight end position, giving you the exact same level. In all seriousness, Dynasty Seller of the Week is the one tight end that everybody has to have. The one, the only, the king, Brock Bowers. Listen, without going too far down a rabbit hole here, Warp has been telling us to sell the tight end position for a while, especially the ones that carry significant dynasty value. Here's the thing, even if you believe in Brock Bowers, you think he's him. I'm not telling you that Brock Bowers is not the best tight end prospect out there. I'm not telling you that Brock Bowers is a bad tight end. I'm telling you none of that. Even if Brock Bowers becomes the tight end one that you think he's going to be, even in that scenario, the warp in which Brock Bowers gives you is far from a guarantee to be anything near what the dynasty value cost of keeping him is. And hell, for the sake of argument right now, and let's say for the rest of his career, he's going to have a pretty decent chance to finish as the tight end one year in and year out. Even in that scenario, there is no benefit to holding Brock Bowers. Holding Brock Bowers right now makes no sense. He's already reached Mount Everest. There is nowhere for him to go. Right now to acquire Brock Bowers in Dynasty, check this out. Let's just start with the players that you can pivot into. If you wanted to go from Brock Bowers to Romo Dunze, you're going to get a plus. You can get either a second round pick or you could get Jamison Williams. Right now you can go Brock Bowers straight up into Jameer Gibbs. And I know people hate running backs, but why in the world? And again, pivoting back to the receiver position, Nico Collins, clearly showing to be the alpha in this offense led by CJ Stroud that is going to be a problem for years to come. Two different times, Brock Bowers has been traded for Nico Collins. Now, if you just wanted to liquidate Brock Bowers, you can trade him right now. In multiple leagues, he has been traded for 225 first. And here's the crazy part. There has been a league in which Brock Bowers was traded for three liquid firsts, two in 25 and one in 2026. Three first, three first. When you start getting to three first for any single player in Dynasty, you are among the elite and, and potentially you could pivot that asset into anything. Right now, if you sent your Brock Bauer share for Justin Jefferson, I'd say there's almost an 100% chance that you get that rejected. However, if you wanted to go trade for Justin Jefferson on the open market, right now in the last five days, he also has been traded for three first on Sleeper. The recent trades right now with Amon Ross St. Brown for draft picks, two first and then two first and a third. These have happened multiple times in the last five days. With the slow start since he's having right now, Jamar Chase has been traded on five different occasions for two single firsts. Now, if you want to go for the elite Konami code quarterback, Jaden Daniels can go for two first. And I know right now Travis Kelsey could just be dust or Taylor Swift has some hex over him. Even then, right now there's been a trade. Brock Bowers has gone for Justin Fields, Travis Kelsey, and a future first in 2025. So there you have it. Those are my money moves of the week. And if that doesn't convince you to sell Brock Bowers, I know that you probably never will. Let me know what you think of all this down in the comments. And I'll see you back here next week for ATM's Money Moves.